Hello students, welcome to another lecture of pharmaceutical jurisprudence. Today we will be starting with the third unit and the first topic in third unit is the Pharmacy Act. So this act basically governs the profession of pharmacy in India. Talking about the history of uh, the Pharmacy Act, so in India there were no restrictions to the practice of the profession of pharmacy and uh, earlier what happened, people were free to distribute medicines and drug products to the public. There wasn't any restrictions, right? But there were various fouls act reported and the recommendation of the Drug Inquiry Committee and the Health Survey and Development Committee laid the foundation for the enactment of Pharmacy Act in 1948. Hundreds of cases were found by the government wherein the compounding, mixing or dispensing of medicines they were being done by people who were not having adequate education. And uh, such acts were causing harm to the health of the general public. So indeed a need was felt that there has to be certain set of regulations so that the drugs are dispensed, compounded only by educated people. And as a result of the mishandling of drugs by non-qualified people, a bill was passed which was termed as Pharmacy Bill and it was introduced in 1945. Following this, on 4th March 1948, the Pharmacy Act was enacted. Now the Pharmacy Act is basically covered under five chapters. The first chapter has the introduction. The second one has, uh, you know, information about the Pharmacy Council of India. The third chapter has information about the State Pharmacy Council. The fourth chapter has uh, information regarding the registration of pharmacists, the procedure and the guidelines for the registration of pharmacists. And the last chapter consists of miscellaneous information. Now coming to the Pharmacy Council of India. So Pharmacy Council of B India was constituted to fulfill the objectives which were laid down in the Pharmacy Act 1948 and the Pharmacy Council of India is constituted by the central government and it is constituted for every five years and after every five years the committee is redesigned or reconstituted. And the members of Pharmacy Council of India, they can resign at any point of time and the people can be re-nominated or re-elected as well. Now coming to the members of Pharmacy Council of India, the members can be categorized into three broad categories. The first being elected members, the second being nominated members and the third being ex officio members. So, talking about elected members, there are six members including at least one teacher each in pharmaceutical chemistry, in pharmacology and in pharmacognosy on the teaching staff of an Indian university and these members are elected by the UGC. UGC is University Grants Commission. In the elected member, one member should be elected by MCI. MCI is Medical Council of India and one member should be a registered pharmacist who should represent each state elected by the state council. Now coming to the nominated members, six members including at least four people uh, who have the degree or diploma in pharmacy and they are engaged in the practice of pharmacy. One representative each of UGC that is University Grants Commission and AICTE. AICTE is All India Council for Technical Education. Then uh, one member should represent each state or each union territory and who shall be a registered pharmacist nominated by the representative of the state government or of the union territory. Coming to the ex officio members, so the first member is the Director General of Medical and Health Services, Government of India or any other member on his behalf or nominated by him. Second being the Drug Controller General of India or any other member who is nominated by him. Third being the director of Central Drug Laboratory which is situated in Kolkata. So thank you so much dear students. This was all in today's lecture. Today we started with the Pharmacy Act and we discussed about the basic history of the act. Why was this act formulated and we started with the constitution of Pharmacy Council of India. Right. In our next lecture we will be studying about the 
uh, objectives and the functions of Pharmacy Council of India. Along with that, we will be studying uh, about the state and joint pharmacy councils. So, if you have any queries, any questions in today's lecture, you can please ask me. And uh, thank you so much for attending this lecture. Thank you.